begin with the latest coming in on Japan as the Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga is visiting Vietnam and Indonesia in his first trip abroad since taking to office. The Japanese Prime Minister has already left for Vietnam. The visit to the Southeast Asian countries comes amid growing concerns over Chinese aggression. After Quad, which comprises Japan, the United States, India and Australia, Tokyo is clearly seeking to open another front against China. This, as several ASEAN members, including the Philippines, have ongoing territorial disputes with China, while Vietnam is the co-chair of the 10-member Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN. Indonesia is the group's biggest economy. また、両国との間で自由で開かれたインド太平洋の実現に向けた協力や南シナ海問題、北朝鮮情勢等の地域及び国際社会の喫緊の課題への対応について意見を。Now it's important to note that Suga is following the footsteps of his predecessor Shinzo Abe, who too made a trip to the two Southeast Asian nations after taking office. The Japanese Prime Minister is under pressure by ruling lawmakers to take a tougher stance against China. Let's quickly get in a sense of perspective on this new story. For that, I'm joined in by Professor James T.J. Brown, who is an Associate Professor of Political Science at Temple University. He joins me live from Tokyo at this hour. A very warm welcome to you, Professor. Let me begin by asking how crucial are Vietnam and Indonesia to Suga's visit, considering Vietnam is the current chair of the 10-member ASEAN grouping and Indonesia its biggest economy? Well, like any world leader, uh, the first overseas visit is a real opportunity to, to demonstrate the priorities of the administration. So with Suga selecting Vietnam and Indonesia as that first destination, it really shows that it's a major priority of his administration to continue to build ties with those two countries. That's to do with economics, certainly, but it also has a lot to do with security. And as you mentioned in your introduction, a lot to do with uh, strengthening, sort of balancing efforts against China's activities within right. the region. Right. Since you mentioned the security aspect, which is, of course, of prime most importance to this entire visit, Professor, can Japan, which is part of the Quad, also unify forces with the Association of Southeast Asian Nations to counterbalance China's growing clout in the South China Sea? It's a slightly different tactic here. So the overall strategy is the same. Um, mm -hmm. But with the Quad, what Japan's looking for is much closer security cooperation, including military drills and uh, things of that nature. Whereas mm -hmm. with Southeast Asia, it's a much softer approach. They know, uh, the Japanese side, the Southeast Asian nations are not going to choose one side or the other. China is simply too important economically to do that. So Japan's taking a much softer approach. Right. They're not pushing these countries into choosing sides. It's rather, rather about just deepening a certain level of security cooperation. It's interesting that you mention the softer approach adopted by Japan in terms of addressing the Southeast Asian nations. I'm exactly going to come to that bit. Uh, Professor, what are the potential challenges for Suga, who succeeds Shinzo Abe, a prime minister who did manage to tighten those ties with Southeast Asian nations, but still has not been able to reduce their dependency on China, which is a giant economic partner for these nations? Well, I think Suga will face the same problems in that regard as Abe, but some additional ones as well. Personally, he doesn't have much international experience at all. Right. Abe, from even quite a, a young age, had uh, experience of living abroad, traveling abroad. Suga doesn't have that. He's largely an unknown figure uh, internationally, including in East Asia. So this is why this trip is so important, just to get himself known by some other international leaders, uh, and so I think that his priority here will really just getting himself known, making the personal connections in the hope that he can continue the work that his predecessor did, who is a very frequent traveler overseas. Right. Those are some very valuable inputs that you've shared, Professor. Thank you so much for bringing in your perspective on our broadcast today.